previous videos I've talked about how you can use NPM modules to enhance your project. You can use code written by other people by installing NPM modules. Today what I want to do is I want to talk about how you can create your own NPM account and how you can create your own NPM modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project called Test Steve. This is going to be my NPM module and then I'm going to use it in another project called Use Steve. Inside Test Steve, the only thing I have inside this folder is a README file. Inside my Use Steve folder, there's nothing at all. So, first step in building something for NPM is you need to have an account with NPM. So I have an account and I'm currently logged in. I can check my account by running the npm who am I command. This is my username. Now, if you need to create an account, you can do that from the command line. I can say npm add user. This is going to prompt me for a username and then a password, an email address, and then create my account. So I don't need to do that again, so I'm going to exit out of that. If you have an account created, you've rebooted, you run the who am I command, and you're not logged in, there is an npm login command that will allow you to enter your username, password, and log in. All right, so that creates the basic account. At that point, you have something like this. So npmjs.com, tilde, and then your username. So whatever the username is that you create. This is my account. So now on to building a module. I want to publish something to NPM. I want to build something and publish it onto there. Well, I'm inside my folder already, test Steve. This is the, going to be the name of my project. So we'll do what we do with npm to create a project, npm init. The init command will, as it says here, it'll walk you through creating your package.json file. So the name, yeah, that's what I want. So I'm just going to hit enter. The version number, not something that I'm ready to share with people. 1.0.0 is the default starting point. This is what you should. But when you're testing, when you're doing initial programming, you can start it at 0.1 to say that this isn't something that's really ready to share with people yet. Description, just a test. Entry point. This is going to be the name and location of the JavaScript file. Inside the package.json file, there's an element called main. That points to the starting point. This is the script that when somebody else requires your module, this is the file that they're going to load. So for now, I'll leave it as index.js. We'll come back, we'll change it, we'll move it to a different location, but we're fine. I don't need anything for test. I don't have a Git repository or keywords. MIT is fine for license. Is this okay? Yes. There we go. Now, I have created a project here. So inside of test Steve, I list that off. Okay, package.json. And I had previously created this readme file just so I wouldn't have to type it during this video. But the package.json, let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here's the one that's created, and here's that main element that I was talking about. There's the version number that we entered for the npm init command. Main is the name of the file. So if I want to, I can create the file here at this location. We can do that in our IDE, or we can just do the uh, command line touch. There we go, now we've created the file right here, index.js, that's what main is pointing to. If I want to have this at a different location, that's fine. I can create a folder. Let's, uh, let's create one called dist for distribution. I'm then going to take this index.js. I'll delete that one. I don't want that. And I will create one inside my dist folder. Okay, so I've changed the location. That means I have to go back into my package.json and I have to say where it's now located. Just like that. So now my package.json file will point to the dist folder and the index.js file inside of it. And this is the main point. When I require my module test Steve, it will be pointing at this file by default. All right, so let's put something in that file so we have something to work with. Now this is the, um, the basic 
about as simple as we can get. So I'm going to create a file where I, uh, sorry, a function where I pass in a parameter. This is going to be a string, and I'm just going to console log that message. Inside the template string, I guess. That would make sense to use my template string if I've got the uh, backtick characters. Okay, there we are. So we're going to write out a string and then whatever is passed inside of here. And actually, I'll we'll make, come back and make changes and I'll show you how to update the version as well. All right, so that's about the basics. Now I've got a, a readme file, I have a package.json. I have the main property inside my package.json that points to the location of the file. Those are all the requirements that you need to create a module. Once you have that created, so on the command line from inside of here, I can say npm publish. Yes, I had one called this, which I deleted already. So let's call it something else. So we'll just jump back in here. Call it test Steve 2. There we go. Now I've got test Steve 2 version 0.1.0. .1 .0. That has now been put online. So if I refresh my home page, there it is. I have now a package right here. Test Steve 2, that is the package. Here's my readme file that I had written previously. And to install it, npm i test Steve 2. That's all I have to do to install this now from anywhere that I have an internet connection. So back in here, my CD use Steve, this was an empty folder. So I'm going to uh, set this up. I'll do npm init. I'll just take all the defaults. There we go. Here's my file. Uh, main points to index.js. So I'll create that file. What the heck? There we are. Index.js is now inside my folder. Come back in here, there's use Steve. Here's my package.json for use Steve. There's my version. That's all I need. I don't have any dependencies here yet because I haven't installed my test Steve 2 package. Nothing inside of my index.js. We are going to be using it though in a minute. All right, coming back here, I have my package.json. I now want to include this test Steve 2 package. So npm install test steve2. I can specify a version if I want. Don't need to. I'm just going to take whatever version is there. And I will say save. That will add it as a dependency for my project. Boom. There we go. Version 1 has now been added to uses steve. In my package.json, there we are. Dependencies, version 0 0.1.0 .0 or higher. So the semantic versioning, I'll do another video about semantic versioning, but basically I'm saying anything up to but not including a change in the major version here. So I can update either of these numbers and I'm good to go. Now I want to use what I built Let's go back and take a look at the test one. So I am exporting MSG. That is the function that's being exported. If I come in here and I create a variable, say const Steve equals require test Steve two. 
what I'm saying is include that file, really, everything that's inside that file, all of the things that have been exported. So steve.message, if I jump back and look in here, that was the name of the function. So steve is the whole thing, message was one of the functions, and that's what we're going to be using here. And I can pass in a string, hello, save it. Now inside here, I can run, sorry, not npm, but node, and I will run index.js. And there it is, the message, hello. So this is code that came from test Steve 2. I am calling this function to write this out with the string hello that I passed in. So right here. Now another way that we can do this, this works just fine, but if I knew the name of the function, like here, message, if I just wanted to bring that function in by that name, another way that we can write this is like this with destructuring. So I'm taking this from this file. going to this file, requiring it, but I'm extracting just this part from here. And there's a different name for this. I can't think of it right now. It's not destructuring, but it works the same way. So I'm going to be calling a message with goodbye. All right, we'll go back and run this again. There we go. Hello, goodbye. Both are running, both are working. Great. So we have successfully created a module, imported it, required it, and used it. All the different parts are done. Now, a couple last little things to, to show you about modules themselves. If you want to update it, so let's say I made a change. I come back in here and I'm going to put a default value for m. So if not m. Let's say they didn't pass in a value. We're going to say that m equals error. So if they don't provide m, this is going to be, it'll say the message colon default message. All right, so I've made the change back to my terminal. Inside the folder with my test Steve 2 project, I am going to update that. So we can say npm patch, and then with the patch, we want to pass in one of three commands. We're going to, oh, sorry, npm version, patch is one of the terms, npm version. And then we're going to say either patch, minor, or major. If you do patch, you're updating this final number. That means it's a bug fixed. If you go npm version minor, you're updating the middle number. It means I've added a new feature, but it still should be backward compatible. If you're doing major, it means you're updating this first number and you've changed the code in somehow that is not backward compatible. So that's what major, minor, and patch are. I'll talk more about that when I do a semantic versioning video. So I'll run this, there we go. That's the new version. Now this has changed my package.json file. So we come back in here to test Steve, and we look at our package.json. There it is. It has been updated here. So, okay, we've updated that, but I still need to push it up to the server because here it's still version 0 0.1. I refresh the page. It's still 0 0.1. If I now do npm publish, now I'm pushing the change. Now, I could just do this. I haven't made any changes at all to the code. All I'm doing is I'm changing the version number to 2.1, and then I'm publishing that. So I'll refresh. This will change to 
one more time. Okay, yeah. So it says here that it did it. There we go. Okay, so it's just it's cached this result. It's not doing it. Um, we can make a change to a readme file. Maybe we can force it to recognize the fact that we changed. There we go. Save that. Come back. Bug fix. We're updating the patch. We'll publish this. And now we're pushing up the new readme file. Okay, well, it's not <laughs> it's not updating here. Oh, there we go. All right. So, latest version. It was just my browser caching the uh, the page. There's the change that we made in the readme and there is the version number that has been updated. All right, now back inside of our actual project, the use Steve. Inside here, if we look at our package.json file, test Steve, we said, okay, we can do anything up to uh, one dot whatever. Now, if I do npm install test Steve 2, there we are you'll see it stayed at this version. And that's because in here, we were specifying that it couldn't be anything higher than that. So it stayed at the same version. Now, if I do npm install test steve2, you can see 0.2.3 is what we're currently at. I can specify a version here. I can do it this way. So I can say anything 0 0.2, whatever the latest is for 0 0.2. There we go, and I'm downloading and installing. 2.3 is what I get. That's what we wanted. That was the latest one with 2 as the version number. But we haven't made that change in our package.json file. Oh, it did make the change. Make a liar out of me. What we should do is Oh, it's because we've previously installed it in there and required it as a dependency. Um, what we should be doing always when you're installing something is use the save flag. And that way you are sure to have updated your package.json file. And there it is. So we're saying anything with version 2 and up, or 0 0.2 and up. Okay, so that's the full life cycle that is creating a package, or a module, actually. Uh, there's a difference between package and module. It's not a huge thing. Package is a whole program. Uh, it has a whole bunch of requirements to make a module. Really what you're doing is you're creating something that will be required by another project. So you need a folder that has a package.json file, uh, you should put a readme file in there always. Um, and then your, your script file. So your package.json, your script file, your readme. If you have those three things, and then you can publish that to NPM and then bring it down and use it inside of another project simply by using require. If you can do that, you've created a module. Most of what you see on NPM actually are modules. And that's what we've done here. We've gone through the full life cycle of creating a module, publishing it, updating it, importing it into another project, and using it in another project. So I hope that helps you get started making your own NPM modules so that you can reuse them in projects. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.